This is your pilot speaking. Welcome back, Hunter Wilson, owner of Wilson Aerial Spraying. Today I'm gonna show you kinda how I have my trailer set up. That's a big issue, right? How am I efficient with my trailer? Well, I'm gonna start on my tanks. I've got two 275 gallon tanks at the bottom and that's just purely my water tanks, right? That's what I'm gonna be carrying my water all day, every day. Fill those up in the morning, hit the field, and then I have two smaller tanks up top that I mix in. We usually mix right at 100 gallons, a, what do you call that, a batch? You wanna call it a batch? Yeah, whatever. So probably, it'll usually do 50 acres, right? Two gallons per acre. And what we have is a GX, what was a GX 600? 60, yeah, GX 60, sorry, Honda pump that we use to uh, actuate our chemical as well. So we have a main, our main two inch hose that runs out of our mixing tank with a valve here. Once this is open, right, chemical comes down, goes through our pump, back through our outlet hose which is connected to our one inch fill hose, which goes into the drone all the way to the top right there. So we keep our chemical completely actuated and it's continuously moving. So there's no sort of conjunction and it works absolutely great. Thanks to my dad who would be, I would call him the engineer of this whole entire project. We have another small 25 gallon tank here that uh, sometimes we mix out of, but most of the time, guys, it is really efficient for us to just unscrew the lid off the top of the tank and pour our chemical directly in. We're gonna show you that right after I get done explaining our trailer setup so you can see how that works. Um, a DGI generator, this came with the drone, obviously. You can buy another generator elsewhere as long as it's not a dual fuel generator, guys. You don't want to have like a propane diesel setup. Make sure it is either a straight diesel or straight gas generator, okay? This bad boy has to be 9,500 running watts, okay? That is the minimum, okay? It has to have 9,500 watts in order for it to be efficient which <clears throat> this guy right here, it has a built-in connection cord that is built for DGI, which runs into my battery charger. When we're running and gunning, this bad boy right here is running all day long. So, hey, ear protection's key. If not, you're gonna have a ringing in your ear and you will not be able to go to sleep because I do it every day. Okay, um, ooh, right. So usually we've got a, like I said, we got a gooseneck here. So we fly our drone onto our trailer, strap it down, put it into here, throw some ratchet straps and we're good to go take our filler hose, wrap it around. Um, we have our other two inch lines that come from our water tank. If you wanna come up here and show them a better angle of this, but we have two inch hose coming from here with a filter with uh, another valve cut off here. So whenever we start mixing chemical in order for us to get water, we are going to unhook this hose from the bottom here and tee in to our pump and then turn our valve on here, which is gonna allow water to go all the way through the top. And we'll add our water there. When we start mixing chemical, we will hook this one back up real quick. Water goes and then the, it starts actuating again. Okay, simple and easy guys. Listen, I know if you start drone spraying, the hardest thing is probably your trailer setup. Flying the drone itself, it just takes time. But for the most part, guys, keep it simple, especially if you're not gonna, now it's different if you've got two or three different drones running at the same time for us where we got a two man crew, one drone at a time. So this is very, very efficient and very, very easy to set up. Um, is it cost efficient? Yes, the, the valve systems, they're, they're pretty expensive, but once it's all intact and key, you're good to go. Um, I would say the reason why we have a cutoff here is because the valves on our chemical tanks are very, I would say cheap, and they can in, 
intend to, to bust a little bit and maybe not work as well. So cut off is key right here just to make sure there's no hiccups and you have chemical flowing back through that you don't need to. But um, that's about it, guys. Keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. Um, and uh, try, to get, try to get spraying, guys. Like I said, we're out here today spraying alfalfa again. Hey, these, we've had a lot of warm weather in February, so we're, we're going back over some ground that, that uh, needs to be sprayed, needs to be killed before these guys get their cutters in the field and start knocking down some alfalfa. First and foremost, these bad boys, okay? Real important, guys, keep your hands clean. I know a lot of farmers, my dad did it for years, so did my cat paw. Hey, they didn't use gloves cool whatever whatever you're feeling but i use gloves because this stuff's sticky okay we are using an insecticide called dimethate okay got a little wind going today so try to get that sucker down in the hole as quick as possible all right those two and a half gallons and then another two and a half We're only spraying about 88 to 90 acres today. So we're keeping our loads, like I said, 100 gallons, do 50 acres at a time. Guys, we're mixing Ravage in there as well. Going in about two gallons. No, it's about a gallon and a half. And that's in there. Okay, and the last thing that we're putting in is Invade. It's a surfactant get that sticky stuff in there so it'll stick to your leaves real well kill those dead gum germs or not germs what am i kill those bugs we're gonna put in about a hundred ounces of that Ooh. and that's it baby we're done Last thing that we're gonna do is, I'm gonna add a little defoamer. I will say guys, if you are spraying with a drone, that is probably the one thing that you need to have is defoamer. Guys, get it from your local chemical guy. Shout out Teddy Thornton, my guy. We are using IVC defoamer. You don't need a lot, just a couple squirts in there, right? Maybe an extra one. Good to go. Let's get that bird in the sky, baby.